So can we move on to smart retail now? It's obvious that more people are doing their shopping online, but how can we entice people back onto the high street? It's a very good question. I mean, if we think about what the um, online retailers are doing, they know an awful lot about your shopping habits. They know what you looked at, how long you looked at it for, whether you looked at the reviews for that product, how many reviews you read, whether in the end you bought or not, which site you went to after you left their site. So we have a lot of information about behaviour. One of the challenges with bricks and mortar is the people will want to go there and look at product and then go away and buy online because perhaps they get cheaper more quickly, the size they want, the colour they want. So I think retailers have the challenge of how to respond in a better way to the needs of the, the people using their facilities. How to respond better, it means they have to have better data about what people are doing. They have to have a better way of enticing people into their environment to come and look. In the retail world, we're doing a lot of work with new kinds of sensors. So we're working with a 3D laser, laser diode technology, which allows retailers to site IoT sensors in strategic places, either in the shopping mall, in a doorway of the store, inside the store. And what these sensors allow the retailers to do is to collect real, real data, stats about what's really going on. It means how many people come in at what times, which route they go through in the store, which products they look at, what they pick up, what goes in their basket, what they put down. It allows retailers to have a, a more one-to-one -one experience with the customer because the retailers want to have some direct marketing. It's difficult to be targeting smartphones with adverts and so on because people are getting fed up with being targeted. However, if you go to a store and you want to buy a product, it could be a watch, it could be DIY, it could be skincare products, maybe you're, you're just browsing, you want to see what's going on, you have some idea. If retailers are able to equip you more easily with the real information that you want to know about that, that, that product, perhaps there's a, a, a better way to convert you to be their customer. So what this means is we link together sensor technology, which can detect what you look at in the store, how long you look at that for. Without touching, the retailer could know, the retailer system would know you're looking, but you haven't touched. The system could automatically pull up a video onto a screen in front that starts talking or showing the product. So you have a way of uniquely engaging in one-to-one -one marketing with the customer. So I think retailers need more data of what's going on in their bricks and mortar establishments. So what we do is we provide the tools and the data analytics engines to allow them to do that. And what sort of retail would, retailer would benefit most from that kind of technology? So if you imagine many kinds of retailers, so it, could be, it could be a chemist, a chemist chain, so you have products for well-being and so on. So um, it could be any retailer who wants to know, I'm launching some promotions, I want to know where those promotions are effective, which stores are seeing the biggest success rate for that promotion, um, am I doing my geo positioning of those offers correctly, should I be doing things differently in different locations at different times of the day, and really you can't decide those things unless you have data. So you need to have the data that backs up really what's going on. So, of course, you have to get the people to come in in the first place. So I think we're, we're going to see far more digital signage on the streets, on the shop fronts, funky things that are going to get people to come and look and see what's going on. Again, if we're using IoT sensors, we can, we can ascertain how successful we are in converting people who walk past the storefront to actually come in and take a look. So we can start to build really those analytics that let us see those kind of conversion rates. And then if we're able to link that to the POS data, which talks about what people buy and how they pay, we start to get some real insight into conversion from outside the store to looking at products to actually what gets bought. Yeah. You mentioned uh, geo-targeting just now. Um, so I'm interested to know more about the, the, the marketing opportunities of all this smart technology. Geo-targeting, geo-fencing, can you talk more about that? Sure, I think um, there, there, there's two sides to geo-targeting. There's um, one side is really looking at how people are responding and behaving 
And one good way of doing that is by looking at social media data. So there's an awful lot of marketing um, goes on now via the main social media sites, the websites where people are spending all their hours each day looking at stuff. So if retailers can tap into that rich source of data and start to see what people are thinking about um, and use that data from a geo perspective. So, for example, if we can work out that certain kinds of tweets that say certain things about our offer or our new product launch are coming from a certain place, we start to work out the sentiment of the people and how they react to that. So really, one side of the geo-fencing question is how people react. And the other side is what we offer to who and where. If the retailers can blend this data, so it means using tools which tap into social media to see what's going on and see what's happening, and almost in real time work out, actually, we're seeing that people are buying this from this, these kind of stores, we have a competing product, if we can do some promotion around that, perhaps we'll get them to come into our store. They could almost in pseudo real time start showing some videos of their product launch or their competing products in their stores in that area to entice people in. So you can start to see some really reactive things. IoT and big data analytics allows you to do that. If you have the data, you can decide how to act on that data. So it's all about knowing, knowing what's going on and reacting to that. If we think about those two sides, we can both decide what to show and promote and look at how it's going down, how it's, how it's going down on social media. Yeah? And are there examples of this already in, put in place? There are examples of retailers now starting on this journey because this is quite new really trying to work with the retailers on both angles, on, on, on what people are thinking and what we can push to them, is really quite new. So um, we're working with a number of retailers who are looking to do some of these things, but it's a kind of a step-by-step -step process. So the retailers are very interested in seeing really, does it really work, this technology? Can I really get those kind of information? So they, they start off at the beginning by saying to us, We'd like to have some kind of dashboard from you that really shows us that what you're saying is true. We want to see, are you able to show where the people go within the store? Are you able to show how they move in the store, where they stop, where they spend time? So I think to say to you it's happening as a one-off is not true. It's going step by step. And at the moment, retailers are not good at knowing where people go, whether they go past the door, if they stop for some reason and come in, why? That they don't know that kind of information. So if they're able to build that data and analyze that data on a regular basis, and if they have, let's say, five or 10 metrics that they say are important and start to use those five or 10 metrics as a set of levers to work the business, then you start to see, we can see some quite interesting changes happening. The benefits seem obvious, but for the consumer who um, is perhaps not happy with being monitored all the time, um, how, how do you make sure they're not suffocated by it and it's, it's an easy experience for them? I think one of the, the key challenges is when, when you sign up to um, online marketing, you get continual push to your smartphone. I think in the end, people start to get fed up with that. So um, when I talk to you about IoT Sensor, I'm talking about privacy compliant tools which don't expose people's faces or gender. It's really collecting data about how people behave in the store to try to give them more information that can help them. So if I pick up a skincare product and I, I want to find out about it, I'm standing reading, it's quite nice if a video pops up and shows me something about that product, how it's being used, what the USPs are, um, why, why I should use that. If I'm not interested, I'll just walk away. I'll look and walk away. So really, if I'm really interested, then I could stand and watch and perhaps think, oh yeah, that's for me and I'll buy. So I think we have to be, we have to be less intrusive than the kind of constant pushing of adverts to phones, yeah? Because in the end, people get fed up with that. So it has to be a subtle approach to providing the right amount of information so the retailers can't provide that 
unless they have data for that. So how to collect that data in a way which isn't intrusive, that's the challenge. Yeah? And in the end, if you don't like being marketed to in such a direct way, you walk out the store and the retailer learns very quickly, actually, that's not interesting. But the kind of discussions we're having with them show that this kind of unobtrusive, more subtle approach than pushing adverts directly is something they're very interested in exploring. And that, that, that's a real cross-section of retailers from healthcare through to um, telecoms companies wanting to know how to push their communications products through to stadiums who want to have better experiences for their customers through to events management companies who want to make sure events run smoothly. So there's a real cross-section of the kinds of um, organisations who want to use that tech. So if we think about um, how, how we can link together these technologies, not just from a retail perspective, but going back to the kind of smart city perspective and thinking about how to make experience better for the people. If we think about the tourism case, we all have experience of going for a weekend to a place like Rome, where there's a lot of nice attractions, but we find we get there and it's too busy. It's a huge queue outside St. Peter's or the Vatican. Uh, how long do we stay for? When should we come back? So if we're able to collect together data for the city that allows them to build a picture of what's going on, it means we can start to give that information through some kind of tourist app to people, which makes their whole experience better. If they know there's a two-hour queue, they go somewhere else. So we can start to build a picture based on the real events and the real data of what fits for the people. So we're starting to kill several birds with one stone as well, yeah? Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's been fascinating finding out about our future. You're welcome. Thank you.